see here i you know we have we know that i is equal to ib plus ic ic is hfe into ib so i am writing i is equal to 1 plus hfe into ib okay so if you consider input impedance usually means we will be considering the input impedance two input impedance are there one is with this external resistance rb one is without the external resistance R, rb so without the external resistance rb we find input impedance zb here excluding rb if you include rb it is going to be after the rb we are finding out zi so zb is without rb zi is including rb so if you see zb this hie and this resistance are in series and the current flowing through is so if you apply kvl here you can write V, uh, VI is, will be equal to HIE into IB plus 1 plus HFE IB into RE. So IB can be taken out. You get HFE. See here this equation. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if you write the KVL excluding the base resistance, VI equal to IB into HIE plus 1 plus HFE into IB into RE. So I can take IB as common. So HIE plus 1 plus HFE into IB. So ZB is going to be VI by IB. So divide by IB, you will get the ZB. ZB is HIE plus 1 plus HFE into RE. So HFE is very, very large. So 1 plus HFE can be approximately equal to HFE. So I can write ZB equal to HIE plus HFE into R. This approximate expression. This is the actual expression. This is the approximate expression. When you compare these two terms, HIE and HFE into RE, the first term is very, very small compared to second term. So I can write ZB is approximately equal to HFE into R. This is the second approximated term. Okay. So we have two input impedance. One is with uh, RB, one is without RB. With, without RB, we have found ZB equal to HFE into RE. If you include RB, you see RB and this one are in parallel. So ZI will be equal to RB parallel to ZB. That is what is given here. So whatever you include RB, anything with, uh, with including RB will be parallel to that because RB is between base and ground. So it is lying parallel, right? So input impedance will be RB parallel to ZB. So whenever you do a parallel combination, the resistance value will increase or decrease. Whenever you do a parallel combination of two resistances, the value will be increasing or decreasing? It will be increasing or decreasing? It will be increasing or decreasing? We have done so many problems, right? Four parallel to do. If you do four parallel to four, the effective value of four parallel to four is two. So the resistance value will decrease. So here also, because of the fixed bias, uh, because of the fixed bias circuit having the uh, uh, external resistance RE along with RB, okay. So the, in, the input resistance value is going to be reduced. So when the input resistance value is reducing, there is a chance that the current drawn from the source is going to be larger. The current drawn from the source is going to be larger. Okay, so that is the implication from the input impedance of your this transistor having unbypassed emitter resistor. Okay, any doubts in input resistance? The same procedure we are following till this, it's going to be same. But here, after the finding out ZB, we are finding out ZI. ZI is including RB. So it will be RB parallel to the entire value of ZB. That's what is given. Z i equal to R b parallel to Z b. Okay. So now the output uh, impedance. How to find the output impedance? How to find the output impedance? On the output side, what all resistance you have? What all resistance you have in the output side? We have one is R c, other one is H i e i b and R e. The impedance of current source is infinity, and here RE, infinity plus RE is infinity. Anything parallel to infinity is RC. So the output resistance will be equal to RC. Any doubt in the output resistance? If you don't include RC, the value is infinity. If you include RC, the value is RC. Okay, the output resistance is equal to RC. Any doubt in the computation of output resistance? It is same as the previous case. So if you could relate and study, it's going to be very, very simple for you. 
so whenever you study all these common amplifier configurations it is uh, uh, advised that you compare the circuit and study so when you compare the different circuits and study you will find the difference and you can understand things very very easily okay so when you read for your assessment exams or end semester exam when you study all these amplifiers ensure that you are going to compare the circuits and study so the learning will be good and you can also easily understand where there is change in the expression